Hi, this is John. And I'm Cecilia. From Crazy Cat Paranormal Speaks. And you're listening to the Bigfoot Club Podcast. I wanted to mention if you're listening to Bigfoot Club on any of these platforms, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Stitcher, Google Play, Alexa, Listen Notes, or Deezer, please give us a comment, give us a five-star rating, give us a subscription, give us a follow. We would greatly appreciate it. Also, please... Like and follow us on social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find us by searching Bigfoot Club, the number one. If you have any Bigfoot, paranormal, or just strange stories, please email us at BigfootClub, the number one, at gmail.com. Please check out Matt Knapp's YouTube channel, Bigfoot Crossroads, and Planet Fear Podcasts. Planet Fear Podcasts can be found on any platform. Also, give and listen to Night College Bigfoot Radio on YouTube with Lauren Smith. Nightcaller's Bigfoot Radio is also found on many other platforms. So if you enjoy the show and would like Bigfoot Club to keep making episodes, then perhaps you would consider supporting the show. You can do this by donating to our PayPal link. These donations will support Bigfoot Club to continue to bring episodes and content. Thank you so much for your support. Hey everybody. Robert Jesse Dominguez, Bigfoot Club, Season 3, Episode 2. I'm here with Steven and Ash. How you guys doing? <clears throat> awesome. <laughs> I'm doing great. Doing awesome? Doing awesome and great. <laughs> the boys are in the back asleep. Yes, we, this we, time. We finally got them to see. I know, right, this time? <laughs> yeah, we did it right this time. We, we, <laughs> we, we waited till they fell asleep. <laughs> waited till they fell asleep. Because last episode, I think I had to like cut like, oh my God, so many minutes like out of it. 45 minutes. Like 45 <laughs> minutes out because Ricardo and Sebastian kept waking up and coming out and saying, they Uncle Robert. They weren't waking up. They were just up. Yeah. They went, ne- never went to sleep in the first yeah, that's place. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. So, well, they're all hyped up on sugar. Oh, yeah. Because it was his birthday. Oh, yeah, so yeah. They had cakes and so. I thought that we were going to have a sugar crash, but they, they did not. They no, did not. They just kept <clears> going and going nope. and going. Energizer bunnies. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about um, this. Is I just found out today, and I was talking to Ash, and I told you today that we are officially banned on where where our. I don't know if it's the the word "ban" is. I think suspended. We, maybe I, we're just our our channel's taken off. Bigfoot Club channel is no longer on YouTube taken right now. Down, it's taken down. Yeah. So. You're taking off like woo, <laughs> millions of dollars, yeah. Shit. So for some reason, and I appealed it today. So I was telling, I was talking to Ash today about it, and uh, I was telling you about it now. So um, it better not be in that cancel it's, culture stuff. I don't I, no, no. It, I, I don't think it was. I think it was like I think more, I was talking to Matt about it, and Matt was saying that if you use like um, you know continuous thumbnails, yeah. Over and over, the it looks like uh, it's the same thing. Yeah, over that, and over, even the, though the audio is different. Yeah, the algorithm will catch it and suspend us automatically. So, as of right now, um, we're only uh, on all the other platforms. So, so literally everything else, everything else but YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> uh, so that mean, I, I guess if we get back on it, do we have to take pictures of stuff? To use as thumbnails? Well, I would. Here, here's the thing, guys. I was using. Remember those three pictures of us that I put together, mm-hmm. like for like podcasts. So it was two of them, and I was using them like back to back on two different episodes, and then threw out some video whenever I was. I needed some space. So I just put that picture in, so they they might have flagged that or something. So I guess I gotta use more pictures of us. We're, we're promoting ourselves. Well, <clears throat> you know, scamming. Ourselves. I've been telling you to do that anyway. Yeah. It, I mean, you know. YouTube's a visual thing, and it's just like just insert yeah. stuff in as it goes along for the story, just for reference. And yeah, I guess I guess I just can't use the same stuff for yeah. the same for other videos. We'll so. figure it out. Hopefully, <clears throat> it's just like a robot thing, and a real human being will look at it. Yeah, 
hopefully, you know. Yeah. Because that's always, that was me. I know. <laughs> um, so this past weekend we went, I mean, Ash and I went to the Falk Monster camp out in, um, outside of Falk, I was at the Fort Smith campgrounds, I think. Yeah, no, it was, no, no. Was it in the Fort, it wasn't the Fort Smith? It, it, not Fort Smith, no. <laughs> that's what a was different it? thing. Um, it was. Port Smith. No, God, what it was, is it is. Hold on. Let me get my shirt. It's over here. Okay. <laughs> so whenever you went there, did you, whenever you're interviewing people, you were just saying, hey man, what the Falk? No. You did, didn't? Because we weren't in Falk. Oh, shit. <laughs> no. So, so uh, we literally give no Falks. So here. we, <laughs> so we were we were driving Friday night or Friday afternoon that way, mm. and uh, got a flat tire, and yeah, and we were almost in we were almost in Texarkana, and I had to. Yeah, we're, we're at the Leary exit, I think, right yeah. there. So it's like ten <clears throat> minutes outside, ten fifteen minutes so you outside of Texarkana. Knew, you automatically knew whenever it happened, like really. Yeah, well, I was driving, and I th- I thought I was hitting like the the, the side, side of the road. The, the side, uh, it was like going. I go and I went to, to like more to the right, and I go, uh oh, and then like went over to the next lane, and I go, hopefully we can make it to the exit, and we didn't. I mean, we got on like the cusp of the exit. It was fucked up. Yeah, so I made him pull the fuck over though because he was on white line <clears throat> trying to change that tire. I'm like, we're going to die because these trucks are slowing down again. Yeah, they were like, they were <laughs> yeah. zooming by this, on this. So I, I'm, glad, I'm glad she did that. So I pulled over to the grass and then like, I think I I changed it pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was like, so I go, I go, screw I this. Felt, <laughs> I felt inadequate. Like I was like, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I just loaded everything back up. So. Know. We I changed the tire. We go into town. We went to this small tire shop. I'm not gonna say the name of them, and but they didn't have they didn't have the Honda CRV tires. So then I had the so I ended up dropping Ash off at the uh, at the hotel, and I drove her a discount tire. They had it, it was like 158 dollars for one tire. Wow, Jesus. So, uh, and I wait like three hours for it. Why did you wait? Th- why does it have to be three hours? Because it was like a lot of people in front of me. So well, screw them, man. Because it was you're telling me you don't four get no o'clock fouls. on a Saturday <laughs> so. in Texarkana, which is like the hub of civilization yeah. down there. Like that's the big city, quote unquote. Whatever. You know, that's where people go for their weekend, so they can go to Roadhouse and go to a movie. So we get up the next. <laughs> so we end up like after that. I say, you know what? I'm not driving to the well, monster, the Falk and- Monster Camp Out. We're going to stay at the hotel. So we did well, that. Well, it was raining too, and it was cold. And, and just said, by the time we got there, we we're just like, no. I said, screw this. So and, and you, you called me too. <clears throat> Let me know about that, and I was like, Jesus, really? Yeah. And then, um, so I wake up the next morning. I go get breakfast, come back, and the battery dies. <laughs> so the, the car, yeah, yeah. the battery, oh the battery God. dies, and like, I, and he, I, he was waiting on me. And so I go, oh, okay. So I have I have Geico, so I I'm not pushing them, and we're not getting sponsored by them. But <laughs> but uh, I uh, I use like the emergency roadside assistance, and the guy was there like within eight minutes. Yeah. Nice. So he jumped me, and uh, well, he didn't wow. he didn't he didn't jump me. He jumped the car. But <laughs> anyway, so we take off we take off to the Falk Monster camp out, and uh, Lauren Smith was running it with Keith Crabtree. And she didn't know we were showing up. So we see this is the most fucked up thing about it. Like he wanted to surprise everybody, but then we had all these fucking car trouble. Yeah. And nobody knew we were coming except for like fortunately I told my family because yeah. they live nearby. I got to see my sister for a little bit. Yeah. Nice. But otherwise <clears throat> nobody would have known that we were there. Yeah. You pulled at Event Horizon. Nice. So <laughs> So I get out of the car and we walk because like she's she's in the middle of this campgrounds and the at this pavilion and She's got merch out and stuff like that. So I'm walking up to her, and she's like looking, like looking at me, like she's, do I recognize him? And I open up my jacket, and it says Bigfoot Club, and she goes, Bob. <laughs> she's happy to see you us. Lost weight. <laughs> yeah. What the heck? So, and it was it was fun. It, I, I will say this, other than the flat tire and the battery and all the other stuff, um, I had a good time. It, it was a great time. I mean, it was a lot of people there that I did not know. The only people I knew was like Lauren. Uh, I think Logan Craft and it was uh, Lori Dyer uh, Hood, which was Lori Phillips in the past. So mm-hmm. um, those are the only people I knew there. Every they're, like everybody else I've seen on Facebook, but I didn't know them. I knew Lori. Yeah, <laughs> was, I guess I guess Lauren too, but just not in person. Yeah, 
Um, so it was fun. I mean, we actually set up, uh, we set up a table behind them and we had like three chairs and I used the, uh, H2N zoom. Uh, and so I walked, you know, uh, Ash and I walked around and like talked to people and we were trying to get people to come over and talk to us. And mm-hmm. we were saying, Hey, uh, we're going, I'm doing, you know, I'm Robert Dominguez. This is Ash. We do Bigfoot club podcast. Come over and talk to us about your Bigfoot stories. We're really, really like to hear it. And so, so a couple a couple people said they were going to come over and talk to us, but they never did. Well, and, and we weren't went. honestly. We didn't stay there very long either. Yeah. And if we had got to be there longer than we were, I think eventually we would have got more people to talk to us. But how many hours were you there? Um, we got there around what? About, about el- eleven. Eleven o'clock, and I think we left at five because I wasn't feeling. Yeah, that's a long time. I w- I wasn't feeling good. Well, all, all the. Like, there was people camped all around, and not everybody was at the pavilion. The, like, storytelling was at 7. Yeah. Oh, okay. And stuff, so there's <laughs> a lot more people there. But, I mean, you know. Whole we day. still We still got, yeah. It was three, like, almost three whole days. Yeah. Of stuff, you know. Yeah, so we end up talking to uh, Lori Dyer Hood, which is Lori's, Lori Smith's, um, Lauren Smith's mother. Mm-hmm. And she was the one that I tried to recruit for TBRC. Right. And then we end up talking to Stephen Hill. Uh, he's a local guy there, right? Where's, well, where was he from? He's from Locksburg, okay. Arkansas, which is about an eh, hour and a half or so. Okay. So north of there. He, was do, he was doing research with Lauren Smith like in the past. And I think Luke has talked to me about him, too. Mm. Uh, and then Luke, he said he talked to Luke and I think, um, so we got to talk to him about his Bigfoot stuff and then, uh, um, Lori as well. So it was, uh, so we're going to hear their interview like here, like in a little bit. So mm. we'll, we'll run through it. And so, but it was like, to me overall, it was, it was a lot of fun. I, mm-hmm. I, I love, I love being, I wish, I wish you could have been there with us. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, I know it was like the last minute whenever I asked you and stuff. So, mm. but, uh, <clears throat> I, I'm hoping to do one because I, I, I think she does two a year. I think mm-hmm. I think she does one like in March and one in September. October, so like Halloween, uh, like yeah, Halloween so, weekend yeah, or it's supposed around to be a lot then. Cooler weather. Yeah. Oh yeah. To, to, well, well, it, it was, was still pretty. It was, cold. It was Arkansas. You it know, was, it was pretty cold there too. So. Uh, yeah, that weekend because the weather had come through. But I bet this weekend was probably would have been better. But you know, yeah, yeah cause, it's kind of like you know the weather's not too different. Yeah, because like I had a sweater on and and the wind was blowing pretty good and I was like I was pretty and I know you had a jacket and I gave you my extra jacket mm-hmm. and it was still cold <laughs> so yeah. like because we were in the shade but it was nice in the sun it's kind of one of those things but yeah and then and I think since because I I don't know a lot of the listeners don't know I, I've lost a ton of weight and I, I since I've gotten thinner I, I'm cold all the time now yeah he's killing me. <laughs> He's fucking killing me. He keeps you the, see the sweat on my. Uh, he keeps the thermostat at seventy seven degrees. <laughs> Lord, I can't. I can't help it, man. I'm like, wake up I, I in the middle of night like, cold. My space <clears throat> heater and all this shit. And it's like, dude, I can't do this. You need to get. I'm you need having to get on a, a, a I'm waking blanket. up like sweating and I can't <laughs> breathe and like I had to so, get a humidifier. <laughs> so I, I, I'm using her heater in the room and um. And so I let her put on air conditioning. So I actually have the heater right next to me when I'm sleeping. And that heater works really, really well. Yeah, it does. Like it, insanely well. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wake because like if I don't use it, I wake up in the middle of the night cold, and I, I'm, I don't know what's going on with me. So that's kind of yeah. it's my first time actually going through something like that. So it's kind of weird. But anyway, um, but other than that, you know, we had a good time. I had a good time. I, I can't speak for Ash. I think she had a good time. But yeah, you know. You know, we didn't know a lot of people, but still, I just, I, I didn't realize how much I liked being somewhere else mm-hmm. and talking about Bigfoot. So I, it made me want, I mean, I, that, that's cool. I just am excited to go and do our own thing with a yeah. small group of people, we, you know, because without a certain individual. Well, yeah, I, don't know. I mean, that goes without it, saying, but isn't this the first time y'all went out like without? No, I don't know, I, don't know if I'm uh, I never went out with him. No, no, you, no, I meant like as a group of like to go do something. Oh, for oh, the, for the podcast. Yeah, I think this is the first the first time that y'all went. Uh, yeah, without? I think yeah, so. Yeah, because last time was Hallsville. Well, and and, and then we went to on that little like that wasn't really for the podcast. So we went to those two cemeteries, but we talked yeah. about it. Yeah. So yeah, but yeah, we're supposed to go back to that cemetery like in May. 
Mm-hmm. So if you're interested in going, I think I might be. Yeah, it's um, it was actually it was a pretty good experience. I still need. It was sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, I was gonna say I still need to listen to that audio. Yeah, when I did that. S's. Um, we need. Let's do that after. Okay. We finish this. Because I only I don't know what it sounded like and yeah. I don't know. Yeah, for some reason I don't know. I I was having trouble downloading all it. But yeah, I can just listen to it on the recorder. Yeah, but um, but other than that, man, it was. I thought I thought it was like a lot of fun. It was just uh, talking to a lot yeah. of people. There was one guy there that was um, he was he was he was an he was an artist. He was like doing paintings, and his name was Billy something. I don't remember his last name, and I'm probably I don't butch. I would probably butcher it anyway. Zane. So. No. 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 No, I would have noticed Cruda? that. His he was going he had a thing on Facebook he goes by Bigfoot Billy. But I don't know his last name. But anyway, um he was That's ta- the guy with the puppy, right? Yeah, with the with the Oh my god. He had a, a cute puppy in his It's she, like I don't know, like a puppies. hound dog puppy. Yeah, but his yeah. name was Huckleberry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was so cute and yeah. so Huckleberry. sweet. So he was talking to me off the show, off mic about Concho, ah, about the uh, the, um, the casino, casino mm-hmm. incident, yeah. And then he was telling me about it, and I was going, "I go, dude, I researched that with Todd Portain and my nephew." I go, "I was there. I was there like like a week later after it happened." He goes, "Really?" I go, "Yeah." I go, "Come over and talk to me about it, man." Because like he was the one telling me about it, and he goes, "Yeah, there was a time." I, I was there. I I went there. We were there, man. <laughs> we were there, man. <laughs> but it was just one of those things. Like, but and he, he, and he never shut up. No, nah, he was he was busy selling stuff. So I mean, he and then he had his dog. So he's walking a dog and feeding it, and then he was selling pictures and stuff like that. So not pictures, but but paintings. But he had some good paintings. I just I didn't have a lot of cash on me. So should have told those other guys to leave. Mm. It was business. Bitches leave. <laughs> Dumb. left. Ro- Why do you always do like a Robocop quote all the time? <laughs> it's in my blood, man. <laughs> no. Dallas, man. Dallas. Yeah. I, I, could do, I could do it. I could switch it to Terminator if you want. Nah, that's okay. Oh, okay. Right. So, anywho, uh, I think we can go over to these two interviews. And um, it was the first one is Lori Dyer Hood uh, talked about how she got started. And he, man. And it was actually a really, really good story. Y'all going to hear some creepy shit. Yeah, it was some creepy, creepy stuff. So, and then both uh, of them got some good stories. And the second, the second guy is Stephen Hill. Uh, he's a really nice guy. He's like he reminds me of Billy too a little bit. Yeah. Did, he, did, did he have he, a hat? No, no, no. But he was he was kind of tall and he had broad shoulders and had a big smile all the time. <laughs> so he was a good dude. I really, really liked him talking to him. So I'm friends with him on Facebook though. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> well, there's only one Billy. If Billy's listening to this. You're, you're the coolest. Billy is the coolest. Mm. His dad was even cooler. Yeah. Man, I'm sorry you didn't get a chance to meet his dad. His, yeah. his, his dad's good people, man. I heard. I heard. So, um, but anyway, I think uh, hopefully everybody will enjoy these interviews and we'll, we'll be on um, Bigfoot Club episode uh, three will be Ray Ramos, uh, the creator of Crip, Cripnals. Hopefully I didn't say that. I didn't butcher that too bad, but. I'm super, uh, super excited about that one. So, anyway, okay, enjoy. Bigfoot Club, Robert Jesse Dominguez with Ash Tucker. Uh, we are here with uh, Lori Dyer Hood. Hey. Hey. Can, can you can you hear us? Okay. Okay. Um, we're here at the Falk Monster Campout, arranged by your by your lovely daughter. And uh, Keith, Ca- uh, Cre- Keith Crabtree. I can't even speak right now. I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> oh, don't be nervous. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Um, I know Lauren has called you the legend, and I, I know you don't like that, <laughs> right? <No. laughs> but it makes me sound like from the 1800s, and I've just managed to make it this far. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, but you know, I I, I want to say, and like we were just talking off off show right just a while ago, that I tried to recruit you at for the TBRC. You had submitted a uh, member request, I think, a long time ago. This was probably uh, probably like two thousand one, two thousand two. This is the Texas Bigfoot Research, Research Center. Center. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I I do recall interviewing you on the phone, and I and I felt that you were a good candidate. 
Um, and I think... W- but which he didn't tell me. Right. <laughs> 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 which I, I had thought you were a good candidate, but I think the next step was to meet you in person. And I know I know our our schedules or our... Uh, we could just meet up or something. So I know... Because you never... Because I, I, I think shortly after I interviewed you, I was actually gone from the TBRC. So yeah. I know um, that... Uh, and then you went on to go do bigger and greater things, you know, with uh, Night Callers Big for the Radio, and you've taken it where it's it's at right now, which is really really good. So, uh, so um, who knew? Yeah. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to ask uh, what, because you know I've 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 listened to the show, I've you know I've know all about you, but I wanted our listeners to know what about you that brought you into like the Bigfoot and got you got you started got you interested in it so well I was always a ghost hunter uh huh and uh, I would go different places haunted houses do investigations uh huh I didn't believe in Bigfoot at all really yes I would see it on TV and I was like <laughs> you know just snort you know because I thought that was silly yeah you know and uh but anyway, I lived in this community on Lake Sam Rayburn for probably about five years. And I'd gone out fishing one night after I got off the evening shift. And uh, they came pick me up at the boat dock, or at the boat ramp, and we went off into this little cove. And in the middle of the night, three or four o'clock in the morning, uh-huh. I heard a bunch of coyotes on it. But Wow, do y'all hear the coyotes? And they were like, we don't hear nothing. They were both really yeah. kind of deaf. <laughs> so I said, okay. And then I hear this long howl and then a roar right on the end of it. And it it scared me because everything went dead quiet. It was so quiet that you could hear a bug land on the water. Uh-huh. It was just that quiet. I just had fear in me. I didn't know why. Right. I I was ready to leave, but one thing I did know, even though I've been an outdoors person all my life, I never paid much attention to wildlife, but I knew that nothing howls and roars. Nothing howls like a wolf and then roars like a lion. Nothing does. Yeah. So, I, uh, I... I was ready to go. I said, okay, we're done. We're not catching anything. And, and you know, party barges, they don't move very fast, yeah. about maybe 40 miles an hour full blast. That's that's what I was doing. I, I mean, as fast as it could go. And I thought that thing would catch up with us, get in the water and swim right after us. Yeah. We got to the boat ramp. Of course, I had no idea what it was. Right. None. And, uh, so get to the boat ramp, guess who has to go get the pickup truck, which is way up there at the top, because they got there like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, uh-huh. and then they were, it was the only vehicle in the parking lot, and I had to walk all the way up there knowing there is some sort of strange monster out in the woods. Well, I did that, I got it, backed it up, we loaded up. That's somebody with a... ATV driving by. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sounds strange when you have headphones. Yeah, on. it does. <laughs> okay, so anyway, when I got home, I realized that I was only about a mile from where I heard that boat. <laughs> My wow. house was not far from the boat ramp, and I thought, wow. So that was kind of spooky. But it wasn't until about that was about '98. It wasn't until about 2000 that I accidentally came upon a Bigfoot group. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to them laughing. I thought it was hilarious. It was Jim Lansdale and Bobby Hamilton's group, the GCBRO. Mm, Yeah. And so they had a, a, a pow talk chat room. You can't photobomb a live show. <laughs> hey, Mike. Talking to Michael Walton. Uh-huh. So anyway, um, I was laughing at him, and then uh, somebody played a recording. It sounded just like what I heard. Right. And I was, from that moment on, I was sold. Yeah. There, all the things they were talking about was actually happening around my house. 
And so from that point on, I was just trying to find evidence they were in the area. Yeah. But I still, there was part of me that didn't believe. And then I actually had a sighting. And that was in 2001. And I saw it. It was across the street, standing in the woods. I caught it in a spotlight. I got a brief glimpse of it. Yeah. Uh, but it was enough to know that it was real. It was, know, it, it was. Was it? Was it watching you or just observing yes. you? Okay. Yes. And it had been for a while. I thought I'd been feeling like something was watching me. Uh -huh. So I usually am a person that leaves all my shades and stuff open. But it was out in the woods, you know, like it's a wooded community and no neighbors right across the street. So I never worried about closing windows and stuff, and, but I started doing that. I thought it, I had a, a kind of an odd neighbor and I thought that's who it was. But then after I had the sighting and we went into the woods the next day, where he was standing was real worn. So he'd been standing there many times. And uh, that's probably the same one that was following me around in the woods. That's kind of creepy. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And prior to that, I was receiving gifts. Uh, well, I didn't know they were gifts. At first, it was little animal skulls, but I would just pick them up and put them down. Yeah. But then it started leaving feathers, and I was collecting these feathers. And I didn't realize that feathers are rare to find. Especially large feathers. I had a lot of eagle feathers, blue heron, turkey, owl. I had probably 30 feathers. And I had them all in a kind of a wreath thing hanging outside my door. Didn't know, you know, that that's where they were coming from because they'd always be in the same spot. But I never left anything there back then. People didn't know about gifting. Well, I'm presuming that this one wanted to be my friend. I don't know what, on what level, but he was following me. He was hanging out where I was hanging out. Mm -hmm. and uh, But I never could see him. All I could do was smell him occasionally. And, and, every once and sense him? Did you, did you sense him whenever he was around? No, not really. It was like... Okay. Someone's in trouble. Someone's in trouble with her. <laughs> Keith is about to lay down the law here in a minute. <laughs> slow down. <laughs> but eventually, um, after I had the sighting, uh -huh. and I shined that spotlight in his face, we went back the next day, found the worn spot, a stench like I've never smelled before everywhere, but I couldn't find any cause for it. Like a musty, musty skunk? It smelled like death, puke, musk, and... Pee? And poop. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was rank. Oh. Wow. Normally, I just smell urine smell okay. was around, but this time, I don't know if he, he did that once he was found or, or if he just uh, became uh, anxious and something. But anyway, uh, I never saw him again, and I never had him follow me around anymore. Wow. And my feathers quit. I got no more feathers. And he moved on. He moved on. <laughs> he decided, I guess, when I saw him, I was probably doing this. Had this abject look of horror on my face, like he was the ugliest thing I ever saw. Him. But it was just mainly shock. I didn't really believe they were real. I wanted them to be real. And I couldn't believe they were. You know, I was doing, uh, after I left the TBRC, I was doing some research out in uh, Lamar Point. And I was, I've talked about this on our show that I've actually left like, um, uh, the person that was, I was doing research on his property, he was growing like squash and corn. And so I was leaving it like in crooked, crook of trees, like way in the woods. And I would come back the next day and it would be like a shiny rock or feathers or or herbs they would just leave that for us and i never talked about that with anybody because i thought it would, at the time no one was talking about it it was just too weird exactly and so i i so i can relate when whenever you say the feathers and stuff so yeah he was he was pretty fond of you this yeah. whoever this one was well and this was like 20 years ago and gifting wasn't a thing and and i said i even i even asked you think bigfoot's leaving them and they all go ah! Yeah. No. 
you just got birds up in the tree that are dropping yeah. feathers every day. But, you know? but the, same, the same spot. The, the same, same spot, spot. yeah. Yes. Exactly. So. I would go every day and, and there would be a new feather there and I would just, I'd have my hair up in a bun and I'd just stick it in my hair, make a big thing about it. Like, I believe they were leaving. Right. Um, how many how many sightings total have, have you had? Five that I count. Okay. Um, uh, the, that one. And then about a year and a half later, I saw a smaller one. And he was just moving through the woods right next to where I lived. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to make his way over to an old burn pile. Somebody's freezer had gone down. And they just burned all the rotten meat. Well, it was headed over there to get into it, okay. and I saw it. I was on the phone with somebody, and it was broad daylight. And I'm like, am I seeing what I'm seeing? It looked like um, a man in a, a rusty red coverall. Uh -huh. Everything was red except for his face, just right around his face. And he had this belly, and he was kind of, kind of chubby. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking... That's not a person because when he turned, I could see hair. And I said, I think I'm looking at another squatch. Different one. The other one was much taller. Different color? Same color. Okay. Same auburn, red, you know, kind of. And then uh, the third one was at Chickasha National uh, Wildlife Refuge. It's over there near Sulphur, Oklahoma. And it was about, it was lunchtime. We were packing up. I looked towards the women's bathroom and I saw one do like I <laughs> he was he was black and he was thin and kind of seemed to be small, but he was probably about six foot. But he went from one tree and then he went to another tree and then he went to the last tree and I I was headed straight for that tree. I was headed straight he I wanna see him when he comes out. He was doing it just like the Pink Panther does when he sneaks up. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's what he looked like. So I'm walking towards it, and I kept my eye on that tree, got to that tree, behind that tree, nothing. Mm -hmm. I look across the road, I see the grass moving, and something's evacuating the area. And I said, well, that was slick. That was slick, because he stayed in the line of that tree. We could not see him. And I, I just thought that was slick. So that was number three. Number four and number five, I believe, were the same individual, but a year and a half apart. Oh, okay. And this was on the property I lived on now in Nacogdoches, Texas. And I saw him the first time. It was my best long sighting. I actually got to see the face. It probably lasted 15, 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. um, I was dumping a wheelbarrow of old roof tiles, uh, shingles, down behind Pond Dam. And when I got down there, I got hit with a smell. It smelled like a uh, zoo animal. Real strong. Almost kind of cow manure-ish, but zoo animal. So I, uh, I looked right up and looked right at him. He was just standing there looking at me. He was about 10 foot. He had sloped shoulders, more like a, a like an orangutan shape about him. He had a black chest. Okay. But the rest of his the rest of his fur was was brown and gray and silver and black. Do you think it was dirt? It was dirt or could no, it be? I just got the feeling he was old because he had some white hair around his face. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. But his eyes were deep set and the sun was directly overhead. It was about noon. And so I couldn't never really see his eyes. But I could see the rest of him, but his way the shape of his face. Yeah. And so I just stood there looking at him and he stood there looking at me and we just looked at each other and it may have been 25 seconds or 30 seconds. I don't know, but the weird deal is that the first one I saw, I was terrified. The second one I saw, I was excited. Then I see the third one, and I'm like, nobody's going to believe me. 
And then, and then the fourth one, when I when I actually saw him, I felt some calm. I just felt this calm all over me, and I just felt at peace and unafraid. I just looked at him, and he looked at me, and I didn't say anything. I stood there holding that wheelbarrow, and then finally he just stepped sideways, kind of, or maybe he turned and went off. And then the, I saw him again about three years later in 2010, and uh, it was on a moonlit night. He come up there, and this was the far creepiest thing ever. He belly crawled towards the porch where we were sitting, it was me and another girl. And we saw him behind the tree first, and the moon was, it was cloudy. So the moon was coming out, going in, coming out, and when it went behind them clouds, it was dark. And then when it come out, it was bright. So we're watching this eye shine around this oak tree about 50 foot from our porch, and then we see this arm and a head and the eyes, and we're like, we got us some squatch over there. So we, uh, we started stupidly saying, come on over here. <laughs> Stupidest thing we ever did because when the moon went behind the clouds, he was moving. He started moving, <laughs> and he was belly crawling. Yeah, and that's not that's not creepy at all. Oh, oh, that's very creepy. So I, when the moon comes out, we're looking over at the tree and we're going, we don't see him. We don't see him, but then I kind of noticed like a silvery square moving real slow across the yard towards the porch. And I said, my eyes are terrible at night. Terrible. Mm -hmm. I said, oh my God, is that him crawling? And she looked over there. She had great eyes. She was going, oh, he's crawling over here. And the way she described the way he was crawling, I've never heard anybody describe it like this. Okay. <clears throat> He had his arms completely out in front of him. He was like he was laying flat, like... <coughs> Let me get a drink. Take your time. <clears throat> he was laying prone, but he was up on his toes. And his toes were, like, walking. And then his fingers were walking. And the rest of his body just had to be barely on the ground as he's traveling across. Wow. Like, and <laughs> no. I, don't I like know. That. I don't like that at all. And I had a recorder like, down there. Army crawling, and, not yeah, like a bionic ear and I listened uh. to it later and you could barely hear him coming. He was not making any noise. Just every once in a while you'd hear like a rustle of leaf or something. It just makes you think, like, how often that maybe something like that happened if they can do that and you don't it's, see them and they're so quiet. Yeah, especially whenever it rains and then you can't hear anything. Exactly. So, that is scary. So, anyway, she she is, this is her first visual, and she's just not handling it very well. Of course not. I mean, here this thing is coming towards us. So, she she's doing this. You know, she's doing like um, on Jurassic Park, you know, how he gets up in the front seat. Well, this is what she's doing to me. She's yeah. practically over in my lap. And she goes, Don't stop. Don't come any closer. Stop. Yeah. And he stopped. And he started going back. Words the same way he came forth. I just see we're square <clears throat> moving back towards the oak tree. And I said, You know what? No one is ever going to believe this. No one is. And she was so she was so frightened and upset that I, I said, let's go in the house. Let's just go in the house. And she goes, no, I'm, I'm okay. Well, the moon goes behind clouds. So we're sitting there discussing it. Is he coming back or is right. he going? Well, then the moon comes out. He's nowhere to be seen. But I see this bush moving, but there's no wind. Mm -hmm. Then I realize it's, there is no bush over there. This is my backyard. I know what's... There's no bush over there. It's him. He's sitting there. And I can't tell you if he was sitting with his legs out or Indian style or what, but he was just sitting there rocking back and forth. 
and he was just rocking and he was picking up speed. And I and I had just had enough. I said, I've had enough weirdness tonight. She's, you know, just she 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 was basket cake. I said, let's go in the house. But my woulda, coulda, shoulda has haunted me to this day. And to this day, I have not had another sighting. And I think it was like, either that was the best experience I've ever had and gonna be my last, mm -hmm. or I should have done something different. I don't know. So he, you haven't seen him or smelled or anything like that? No. Nothing? I got the feeling that he, he was probably close to his time to go. And and uh, maybe he was just had a a bucket list. Let's talk to a human being before right. I go or something. I I don't know, but I haven't seen him since. Nor smelt uh, That's that's kind of sad. It is, but he could still be around. I mean, he could have moved on and <clears throat> yeah, exactly. gone on to the next state over. Or um, that's interesting. I know. I interviewed Lauren uh, on our show. And she was saying how angry she was that she hasn't had a sighting. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I haven't had a sighting either. So, and I've been doing it a long time too. So, uh, so I tell, I said, hey, join the club. It's just one of those things. And I, I'd like to think whenever I do see one that I'm going to be calm. But you never know until you see it. So, I mean. It was just like I was telling this lady this morning. She was like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And I say, you know, a lot of people are just so stuck in the moment. It's such an awesome moment that you don't want to take your eye off of it to get a camera. You don't want to take your eye off of it or you're just not thinking. Yeah. You're just taking it all in. And, and that's what happens to people because it's almost like, okay, UFO comes and lands. And it's right there, and then it comes and lands in front of you. Are you going to be running to go get a camera? I mean, you're going to stand no, you're, there. You're going to stand there, yeah, yeah. And it's the same. It's. I wish I could be like super researcher, have my camera ready, and. No. Even when you do, it can be yeah. in your hand and yeah. it's happening, and you never turn it on. I mean, exactly. that's happened to me. I don't know how. Many yeah, times. I'm the same here because I know Luke. Luke Gross, which is my mentor, and I love him a great deal. I love him too. We used to we used to do this we used to do this um, practice where we would carry a camera in the woods, like whenever we were going to like Area Two in Sulphur Springs. I can say that now because I'm not a part of TVRC anymore. So, <laughs> but we would carry a camera and go down these trails, and whatever would popped out of the woods, take a picture of it. And I think one time I had like a, a red fox come out, and I and I had the camera in my hand, and I still couldn't take a picture fast enough. Uh -uh. And so, I I can agree with you there. So I mean, you, you know, you can wish you had a camera, and even the people that have cameras now, you know, wish them luck because I could never do it. No. <laughs> I know for no. a fact. Almost all the pictures that you see out there, they're fuzzy, they're out of focus, yeah. a lot of them, but that is because most of them were an accident. Yeah. Uh, most of them didn't even know there was a watch over there. And so, but I, I, I would love to see another one. And it used to be I would go periods of time without seeing one, mm -hmm. so I convinced myself, you know, I think this whole thing's craziness, I don't even believe it. And then I'd have sighting, and I'd suck right back into it again. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm I'm a big believer that um, that the Bigfoots choose you too, and they they choose they choose to come out and to be seen to a particular people. So I know there's tons of people that want to see them. Like I know I want to see them, but I I don't do a lot of research anymore. But I just think. I'm, I'm a big believer in that now, that they choose the people. Do you think they just choose crazy people? No, no, I don't, I don't think that at all. I'm going to be like, that's why they show up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I just kind of think, I think like, in, I, I think this way in like paranormal as well. I think everybody emits like a, a frequency or a, a vibe or an energy. And it's the same way about Bigfoot. That's, that's, how, that's what I believe. Can I prove it? No, but that's just what I believe. I just think... Bigfoots and paranormal, they choose the people, yeah. and, and so that's just what I what I think and I strongly believe in. So, but uh, but yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Then I, you know, I, I don't know. I just 
Like, what happened to me? Did I lose my mojo? Or I just haven't seen one in 11 years. So. You know, I, I just think it's like you just got to be in the field and you got to do it. And you just got to get That's used true. to it. You've so. got to be out there. And so once you're not in the field more. anymore, yeah, I just don't. Because, like, whenever I was doing TBRC, I don't do this anymore. But when I was with the TBRC, I wore, I wore the same shirt, same pants, same shoes. And I would wash them in really mild wa- uh, soap. Mm-hmm. And I would keep it in a big Ziploc. And so whenever I went to the field, I wore the same stuff all the time, over and over. So I wanted them to get used to me, but it never worked. But, <laughs> but it's just one thing I just believed in. I said, we, we should probably do it like that. And that's, yeah. But, you know, some people, like I said, I think the, the Bigfoots choose the people. So Yeah. But, I think that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. <laughs> now I have to wonder why me. Yeah. You, you, had, you had that vibe. You had that vibe, and, and they were you're just attracted to it. So. Well, I know I've had a lot of experiences, yeah. and I've had a lot of strange sightings that I, because I wasn't sure, but it could have been one, so I may have had more, right. but I just don't claim them because I can't say, oh, that, I don't have time to say, oh, that was a big thing. you know, if I have time to say that, then yeah. that was one. you know, but if I don't have time to say that, then it was, yeah. maybe that was a big thing. Well... I will say this: this is, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I, I think I think it's way too long since I talked to you, and I apologize for that. So, That's all right. so, all right. <laughs> so we'll we'll let you go, and okay. thank thank you for for taking the time to talk to us. Well, I enjoyed it very, very much. much. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. State your name, and you give us Stephen Hill. We're at the the Falk Monster Campout, and you, I was introduced from Lauren Smith. So uh, go ahead, go ahead, and start from there. Uh, how did you How did you go about meeting Lauren? Uh, how did you get into Bigfoot stuff? Uh, I met Lauren a couple of years ago. Okay, it was, uh, we met at Hobnubby at the okay. conference up there, and uh, later that year, I think it was in November, we actually went out and did some. Research. Okay. Well, how you know? How did you get into Bigfoot before that? Was it? Were you in, always interested in it? And you just happened. Uh, I've, I've had an interest in it for a long time. It was, uh, uh, anything came on TV, you know, stuff like that. And I'm from Southwest Arkansas here, so I've always. Mm, Are you from D Queen? Um, Boxburg. Boxburg. Yeah. yeah, I'm from D Queen. I you was are? like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I was like, hang on. <laughs> yeah, my oldest daughter. My oldest daughter graduated in 2012. Uh, yeah, I graduated in 05. 05. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, she was saying it when you walked up because I think he's from Dequin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, come in. I probably haven't seen. I might see some people I know. This yeah. Week, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, my youngest daughter. She. She's a senior this year, okay. and she was playing at tournament national. That's why I'm just nice. not getting here. So. <laughs> yeah, but that, with that right there, that's. Uh, with that, I always had an interest in it, but I mean, it was always, it didn't matter if it was a big foot, UFO, monster, whatever. Paranormal? I watched a little bit of that, and I kind of, I don't know, I just got uncomfortable with it, especially whenever you experience something in your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I kind of, you know, let's quit watching that stuff. Yeah, because like, I always said, because I, I, I've done Bigfoot stuff, and I've done paranormal stuff, and to me, paranormal stuff's a lot scarier, because it could follow you home. Yeah. Bigfoot stuff, you could just go home, and you're fine. So, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes, but you know, paranormal stuff, it, it, it'll, if you let it, it'll, it'll stick with you. So, um, had, had you had any experiences or like in the woods or while you're researching, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. I've, uh, the first, first sighting I had was in 2009. Okay. It was, it was one that ran across the road. I was on my way home from work. Uh-huh. We were working back in a, uh, fairly remote area. It, Costa, close to Costa Falls. I'm sure Ash knows where that's Oh, yeah. At. Yeah, that's so, where we go swimming. Yeah. I was just thinking, it's like this summer when you come back here and I need to take you back up in there. Oh, you, you'll you love it. Now. Are yeah. you into like, kayak and everything like that? Not, not really. <laughs> See, just just above the fall, that's where Skull Crusher is at on the Costa River. And it's, to you. get to it, you have to kayak on there? Uh, no, no. Okay. You, you can drive up there and you come down through the skull crusher part of the Costa. Yeah. But I think it's like great or four, number four rapids. It's one of the few places in the state that actually has that. Really? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not big. Into <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually too. Yeah, my, my brother-in-law does that, so yeah. that's how I know this stuff. <laughs> 
So you you had an encounter up there, or? Yeah, I, I saw the thing. It was I was coming around a coming around a curve, and I saw something through the woods, and it crossed the road on on me. And I don't know. It's probably the top of its back was about this high. Don't know, force. A baby. Yeah, it was okay. a young one. Okay. So. Did you I, see the color on it or anything like that? Or it was either real dark brown or black. It didn't have a tail. It didn't have a muzzle on right. its face. And did you it, stop? I, no, I kept. I wasn't going real fast because it just came around a sharp curve. So I just kept. I just kept rolling forward. Thinking, that's the fastest bear I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I, I, I tried to dismiss it as a bear for a few years. But it was. Uh, I mean, those things they just don't move the same. Yeah, you're totally right on that. Um, so that that piqued your interest in it, or? Oh yeah, yeah I mean, it did. I kind of, I was kind of in denial about it there for a few years. It's, it was probably around 2011, okay. 2012, before I finally, before I finally got all in on it. You know? Nice. So you you got on the internet, started researching it, or what? I didn't start doing that until 2017. <laughs> <laughs> I was just uh, where, where I lived at. You know, I, I would hear. Mostly what I heard from the time of that sighting, well, I guess I need to backtrack a little bit. In the spring mm -hmm. of 2008, where we did that, my daughter, she was still in junior high at that time, she looked through the blinds on the windows in the room, and there was one that she was looking through the blinds, and she saw something big and dark come across the neighbor's yard, and it stopped behind the mailbox. Wow. And the mailbox only came up to about its waist. To give you a to give you a height reference. Wow. It stopped and it froze there for a few seconds and it turned around and went back the exact same way it came from. Okay, yeah, like it was almost like it was being caught or something. Yeah. 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 And uh, so she came running into Nine of my wife's bedroom saying, Daddy, 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 come look, come look. And of course by the time I got there, I mean it's already gone. It's gone. There wasn't anything for me to see. Yeah. So the following year, I had I had a side of my home, you know, up around Costa Falls. So that's kind of scary to have it like that close to your home, though. What did that? I mean, it's it's bothered me. I, I still deal. I still deal with it now. Uh, yeah. This just this past December, I had a deer disappear on my ass chest from the carport. Wow. <laughs> I guess, you know, I guess it likes red meat, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we've had uh, we've had golf balls and some other balls disappeared, you know. Wow. From around the place. I've, I've seen several from my, from my place. Man, that I, I, to be honest with you, I wouldn't know how to react if I had something that happened, like, right outside my door or outside my daughter's off, you know, uh, room. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I commend you for that because I don't... I don't know if I can handle that. That's me. <laughs> but uh, man, yeah, but that's uh, yeah. That, there, there are times, you know, when it's. I, I went through a period of time, you know, after I, I've seen one really big. One. The rest, the rest of what I've seen, they've all been somewhere between five and seven feet. They're not real big. But I've seen one big one, and that that one, it was like an information overload. Why I didn't stop? Why I didn't take pictures? Why I didn't? Why I didn't shoot video of it? I should have, and I've, I wish that I would have. But it was—I'll uh, say that one was at least eight feet tall, and it was this wide across the shoulders. Wow! Did it have a neck? I couldn't see a neck. I really couldn't see its head very much. Okay. See, and that, that's another thing. You know, some of them—they've got their heads are kind of slumped. I mean, four. But a lot of them have, don't have real great posture anyway. So, and that's, uh, we've, we've actually got a picture of one, kind of like the one that I saw. Uh, but that one, it was it was black along the, the top of the shoulders and down its arms, but I could see gray on its back. Hmm. So I don't know if the hair was real thin on the back and I could see the skin, or if it had gray hair on its back. You think it was like mud? I don't, I don't know. It's it kind of a lighter gray, or not? It was a darker gray color. It was. Wow. So, yeah. As Muscle a, tone, all that stuff. 
It, no, it was just big, bulky. It was. It was built like a trash can, man. It was big. It was big from the top down. So it was. It was moving, moving pretty quick, or it was. It was standing still. No, it, it was standing up when I first saw it, and it squatted down. Is what it did. Plus your house or somewhere else? Yeah, that was probably about four miles from my house. Wow. <laughs> and that one bothered me. Man, I had trouble sleeping after that. I was thinking, you know, I mean, if that thing wants to tear the roof off the house and come in, it, it can, it can do it. Yeah. It can do it. I mean, so. what's, what's going to stop that? Nothing. I mean, that's a, that's a monster. <laughs> By any definition, that's a monster. Man. So after, after having the experiences you've had and seeing it four miles from your house, you still want to, you still go out and research it and still oh, yeah. interested? Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll still walk out in the yard. With yeah. Not turning lights on. <laughs> be more honestly like because you know where, where I was staying at with Mandy you know, my sister used to have a place on Old Lodsburg Highway oh really yeah and you know I stay up late and you know, just be out on the porch for myself and you know sometimes you see like you know that's where my yeah. mind you know I'm more worried about big hogs because you know see ones like oh, that out, oh, yeah. or in the yard you know turn on the lo- headlights because we used to work over at at uh, Husqvarna we had to be there 5.30 in the morning turn on the headlights there's this huge hog in the yard that was just feet from us. That's yeah. scary yeah, too. Yeah, that was. That's. that's scary I'm more too. scared of that than, yeah, was, than anything else. Uh, maybe it's your. Maybe in the year four last down here, I almost hit one. Really? I was, I was taking, uh, showing Lauren and Dustin and some others, you know, that were with us to uh, Thornton's Wells. Okay. And it wasn't too far before we turned out on the highway out here and had a big one run out in front of me. Wow. <laughs> I thought it's. I was glad I was able to slow down before that thing. But, uh, <laughs> did, it, did it keep going or stop? Or was... uh, it kept going. It really? kept okay. going. It's a big hole. Wow. Uh, uh, big one. Wow. So, what, I was going to ask you, what advice would you give another like an upcoming Bigfoot researcher that was interested in Bigfoot? What, you know, what, what advice would you give out to, to anybody that's interested in it? Enjoy it, man. It's a hobby. It's a hobby, and enjoy it. And if you can find other people who are interested in doing it with you, just go have go have a good time. I mean, don't don't go do stu- stupid stuff. Just uh, enjoy your time in the woods, whether you whether you see anything or whether whether there's nothing out there to uh, you know happens. Yeah. Just enjoy it. Good advice. Good advice. Yeah, I really, I really like I mean, that. I've got hundreds and hundreds of hours for nothing. Else. Yeah, I was uh, I was explaining to uh, Lori's mom that I used to what I when I first got into Bigfoot research, I used to um, wear the same shirt, pants, socks, and shoes, and I would like wash it in like in mild water mild soap water and keep it in a big ziplock and so I would keep the same stuff and it would take me like I was doing some research in Paris uh, Lamar County in Texas and I was it took me six months to get anything close to any kind of like calls movement anything like that it took me six I knew there were Bigfoot out there because there was like so much sighting reports um, but it took me like six months to get it and I, I, it was a lot of work and it's like the same thing as paranormal you, you know if you do paranormal stuff you're not going to get something like, you know if you're lucky like someone over here mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> they first, like me what can I say first time I take her out I haven't out. seen one okay, yeah but, but, but she had some experiences oh yeah and it does, I tell people all the time you go, the first time you go out you're not going to you know, experience it you know, except for you know and, uh, but you know that it, was it, an accident yeah it was an accident <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah it's like one of those things you, you got to work at it and like it just happens that way and you know yeah that's uh, right now we've uh, got a spot uh, got out here that I'm partners with uh, William uh-huh. Munson uh-huh. we've, we've got a spot we've been going to for uh, I think we're in our fourth year now yeah, I was trying to get him to come talk to me, but he he didn't want to. <laughs> I'll, I'll twist his arm. Okay. Later. <laughs> so, so I was trying to get him to. He goes, ah, you know, I got a couple of beers in me. I don't know. <laughs> so, That's when the good stuff come out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I was trying to get him to talk to me, but I, I don't know where he's at right now. I don't see him. Yeah, uh, he'll he'll be back. Later. Okay. All right. So, so, so it's you and him. You have a spot, and you go you go out there and do it all the time. Yeah. Good deal, man. Yeah, that's a, that's it. I mean, we we set up game cameras. You post any of your stuff, or you don't you don't really care to? Uh, 
he's he's posted some stuff on uh, Duke's old show. Okay. You know, if people want to go look at some of those pictures that he's uh, turned in there. Yeah. Then go look at those videos and, and see it. Some of the audio we recorded there. I mean, it's uh, you're not you're not big into posting all that stuff if you want to. I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of. I don't. Weird. I don't blame you, man. I I, I'm kind of weird about that. I, but no, I, I nothing just, wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. You know, I, I've got a. I've, I don't know. I've got all kinds of stuff that I've taken pictures of, little <laughs> videos and stuff. But I, I just, it just kind of scares me to throw stuff out there. I mean, I was like, I was experiencing uh, like gifting and like stick formations back in the like late '90s, early 2000s. But I never posted it because I thought people thought I was going to be weird or it was yeah. like. Well, yeah. I mean, that's when I was first getting into it. Yeah. And I mean. Unfortunately, I was one of those people, and, and you know, a lot of us were that way, just like, ah, whatever, because we didn't accept it. It's like we would see it, we were like, nah, it has to be something yes. more logical, you know. Okay, so you use the sticks, or did you ever use uh, rocks? Well, I was, I was in uh, Lamar County, and I was, I was, um, we were, I was just, I had just left the TBRC, and when, if you're with the TBRC, they had like certain guidelines you had to follow. You couldn't if you did if you didn't see a Bigfoot do it or have proof, then you couldn't post it. And so I was leaving like I was I was on this guy's property that he he uh, he grew corn, squash, and watermelon. And so we would leave like pieces of corn like in a crook of a tree, like way in the woods, and would come back the next day, and then we, I would have a rock or feathers or really? or herbs or something, and like no one knew I was doing it. I didn't tell anybody I was doing it. And I would get it, and so I didn't post any of it because I thought people thought it was weird. And I, I go, okay. And then, like, we would get stick formations. And after a while, a um, couple people that I was researching with had thought it was ogum. And so I never posted any of that because, like, again, people thought, you know, hey, you're weirdo and all that stuff. So I was experiencing that, like, in the early 2000s. And I never posted it. I never talked about it until later on. I ended up talking to Luke Gross. Uh, he's the, the guy with uh, TBRC, yeah. uh, which is my uh, mentor, and I love him a great deal. And yeah, about, about, about Luke. I got him last year. Okay, good deal, good deal. Because like, if you like Luke, then I I, I like yeah. you then too. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but he was like. He was talking to me about Ogum and stuff, and like I said, oh my God, I've been I experienced that too, and I I wasn't researching with him, and he had like a, a whole series of videos, like of YouTube videos, where it was talking about Ogum, and he was doing it with like three other researchers in three other states, yeah. and so it was like it was like almost nationwide. I said, oh my God, they're experiencing the same thing we're experiencing, and I never posted it, so I can relate to you saying, you know, hey, I don't want I want to hold it close to my chest, I, you know, I don't blame you, so yeah, yeah, I, I don't mind showing anybody stuff I've got, right. Just, just throwing it out there on the internet, though. I'm just, yeah, I'm yeah. Just reluctant about it. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. So anymore now, I kind of feel that way too because it feels too personal. Like I, I it's like this is for me, not for everybody. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I even showed uh, before we actually met. I, I talked to him a little bit, you know, Did you? on Facebook, you know, just uh, about some of the stuff I've had. Yeah. I was uh, I was putting rocks out. And what I was doing, I was putting rocks on the stump. And of course, we were putting our treat on the stump, mm -hmm. and I'd make a, I'd always make a cross, and the rocks would get rearranged. <laughs> and I kept, and I remember I was having some stuff going on with the rocks. You know, it's not once or something. You know, the rocks would get moved. And I remember after I put out the first stick glyph. Uh -huh. if, if I can call it a glyph. Or yeah. I put out the sticks the first time, they were done with the rocks. Since then, they've gone back and they've done it again with the rocks. But my wife, she got on to me. She's saying, those are crows moving the rocks around on the stump. We got game camera pictures of crows on the stump. <laughs> so I was like, not all the pictures are crows. We've got one picture of one that's stumped. That squatted out stump, and uh, so I finally got rocks that man, these things are close to the size of baseballs. So I put them on the stump, and I went ahead and I did my design. You know, put the cross on the stump. My rocks got moved. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I was like, the crows are not going to move these rocks. Those are a little too big. They're a little too big. <laughs> so, so. 
and I told her, I said, you're the one that inspired me to you know to do this. Of course, yeah. my wife, she's like, yeah. she, she wasn't real happy about it. Yeah. I was just picking on me. Uh, I was going to tell you, like, I, fail, I failed to mention that, like, whenever I was leaving, like, the food in, the, in, in, in Paris, yeah. um, when they were leaving me rocks, these were shiny rocks, and these rocks weren't from the area. There was there was a quarry probably like uh, like two miles up in the area, and these uh, the guy that lived on that property said these are from the quarry, <laughs> these are not from around here. And I said really? He goes yeah. So that was just kind of, and yeah. these and these were pretty big sized rocks, you know, and uh, really? just jammed into the crook where I just left the yeah. food. Now see with that, as far as them gifting anything back to me, I mean they really don't. It's, right. I did a, I did have a golf ball. Well, I will just tell you the story. I had a, a deer got killed on the highway, uh -huh. so uh, so I gathered up the deer and I took it down to the power line on my place, and I set a game camera up. And I thought I set it up to where it would take 15 second videos. And so the first six seven days, man, nothing nothing touched me. No no crows, buzzards, nothing. Couch. In between day seven and day ten. The deer got moved from here to the big pine tree right over there into the woods. There was no drag trail. So the leaves weren't disturbed. The deer wound up over there. So you, you didn't catch any video of it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, get, I'll get to that. Okay, okay. I, I, had, I had 500 videos to look through. Uh, but the funny thing was, a golf ball that had disappeared from the yard about six to eight months earlier was left about this far from where the deer was. <laughs> to say, it's me, it's me doing it. <laughs> yeah, because I'd, been, I'd put some golf balls out, in the, out, not right up close to the house, kind of out toward the tree line, and they, they would never take a dirty one. It was always a, a clean one. A, a clean, clean one? <laughs> yeah. But the golf ball was brought back to where the deer was. Wow. But I had, I told you about the 500 picture videos I had. My camera had got moved up where it was pointed at the sky. Uh. I had 500 videos to go through with the sky. <laughs> <laughs> so it just kind of like came behind it and probably tipped it up? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, that it's man. And I couldn't stop watching them because I thought, maybe one of them made a mistake. Maybe one of them walked too close to the camera. So, no, no, it didn't happen. <laughs> I, I, burned, I burned up some batteries going through my card reader on that yeah. one. <laughs> oh man, I'm, that's that's bad luck. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not laughing at you. But that's no, nice. it's just it, that it's typical because that's how it always seems to go. with them big like yeah. that, and it's like, finally, no. It's like they know, they know. And I'm pretty. I wouldn't doubt if they do. Yeah. Well. Steven, thank you so much for coming on and talking to us, yeah, man. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. I appreciate it, man. Um, we're going to probably post this um, probably later on in the month of March and stuff. So okay. um, I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Uh, and we'll talk to you soon, man. If, if you get any stuff, I'd, I'd like you to have, have you on again. Man. Okay. So yeah. if you want to share stuff, that's cool, too. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you some pictures and stuff. Okay, pictures okay. Pictures and videos here in a minute. Okay, okay man. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right. Thank you.